Mactan International Airport, April 6, 2024. We are bound to Manila. Six thirty AM touchdown Naiya Terminal two Manila, Philippines. Hey everyone, today I'm taking you on a special journey through time as we explore the historic walled city of Intramuros in Manila. This place is overflowing in history and I can't wait to share its magic with you. Take a look at these cobblestone streets. They were meticulously laid centuries ago and they are still in use until today. Imagine the countless footsteps that have walked on these very stones. If you look around, these are some of the remaining examples of the Spanish colonial architecture in Intramuros. They offer a glimpse into what life may have been like for the residents here centuries ago. The construction of Intramuros began way back in the late 16th century, around 1583, under the Spanish rule. The Spanish wanted a fortified city to serve as the center of their power in the Philippines.
stepping into intramuros feels like a step back in time. The Manila Cathedral The Manila Cathedral, also known as the Minor Basilica and Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, boasts a beautiful architectural style that combines several influences. The most striking feature is the Neo-Romanesque facade, a style inspired by a European architecture from the 11th to the 12th century. Semi-circular arches above the doorways, portals, and windows. Round columns and pilasters, arch windows with decorative details. Did you know that Filipino artist Galo Ocampo was one of the many designers who made a significant contribution to the Manila Cathedral in the mid-20th century? He designed the stained glass windows that adorn the cathedral's interior. These windows are known for their unique blend of modern and religious themes. Overall, the Manila Cathedral is a stunning example of the Neo-Romanesque architecture with a blend of other influences. It's a beautiful landmark that combines history, art, and faith.
Intramuros might be steeped in history, but it also offers hidden culinary gems. While exploring the walled city, be sure to check out the selection of restaurants and cafes tucked away on charming cobblestone streets. You'll find delectable Filipino cuisine, authentic Spanish fare, and refreshing drinks to tantalize your taste buds. And another must-see spot here in Intramuros is the San Agustin Church. This church is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It stands as a testament to faith, resilience, and the rich history of the Philippines. Here's a glimpse into its fascinating journey. Fifteen seventy-one. The story starts with the arrival of the Spanish conquistador led by Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. Shortly after establishing a settlement in Manila, they built a simple church made of bamboo and nipa leaves, named Iglesia y Convento de San Pablo. Unfortunately, in 1574, a fire destroyed the first church during the attempted invasion of Manila by the Chinese pirate Li Maho. And on 1587, the Agustinians began construction of the present structure using local adobe stone and lime mortar. Today, the San Agustin Church continues to serve as a house of worship and a popular tourist destination. It houses a museum showcasing religious artifacts, historical documents, and artworks offering a glimpse into the Philippine colonial history and the Augustinian legacy. Binondo, Manila, the Chinatown. Nestled in the heart of Binondo, Manila's vibrant Chinatown lies the Minor Basilica and National Shrine of San Lorenzo Ruiz, or popularly known as Binondo Church. This historic landmark boasts a rich history that intertwines with the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines and the development of the Filipino-Chinese community.
the Beyond the Church serves a powerful symbol of faith, cultural exchange, and perseverance. It stands as a testament to the enduring presence of the Filipino Chinese community and their integration into the Filipino society. The church architecture is dedicated to both a European saint and a Filipino saint of the Chinese descent, embodies this fascinating cultural fusion. Binondo is a feast for the senses. Narrow streets pulsate with life as shops and vendors spill out onto the sidewalks. The air hangs heavy with the intoxicating aroma of sizzling food stalls, a siren song for any hungry explorer. This is a foodie paradise and we are ready to dive in. Grabe, sobrang taas ng pila guys kahit saan ka mapunta.
And finally, we have located the ever-popular Shanghai Fried Shopao here in Binondo, Santa Cruz, Manila. This was established back in 1985. As you can see, pinipilahan sila ng mga customers. Due to public demand, medyo mataas ang pila sa Shanghai Fried Shop Out. So I suggest that you come early. And by the way, this is a Chinese takeaway restaurant. Wala po tayong dining. Now, Binondo is in just about street food. This restaurant here offers a more sit-down experience with classic Filipino Chinese dishes. Right now, we are at Toho Pansiteria Antigua, established back in 1888 and making it one of the oldest restaurants in the Philippines. Toho Pansiteria Antigua is a historical gem in Manila offering a glimpse into the city's rich culinary heritage. Tara, pasok tayo. This is what exactly I was craving for. The pancit is perfectly cooked. The spring rolls are crispy and flavorful. The beef with broccoli and sweet and sour pork is fresh and absolutely delicious. We are now in Pampanga, Philippines. The San Guillermo Parish Church also known as the half-buried church of Bacolor, Pampanga, stands as a testament to faith, resilience, and the enduring spirit of the Filipino people. Here's a glimpse into its fascinating history. The story begins in 1576, coinciding with the founding of the town of Bacolor by the Spanish conquistadors. The Augustinian friars, instrumental in spreading Catholicism throughout the Philippines, built the first San Guillermo Church on the land donated by Don Guillermo Manabat, a wealthy landowner believed to be the town's founder. The church was named after San Guillermo, the patron saint of Bacolor.
this church has survived the elements since 1880 up to 1991. In 1880, a major earthquake struck the area, causing significant damage to the church, and was reconstructed back in 1886 by the efforts led by Father Eugenio Alvarez, which resulted in a new church building. In 1991, the church's history took a dramatic turn with the eruption of Mount Pinatubo. Devastating lahars, mud flows unleashed by the volcano slammed into the church, burying a significant portion and leaving only the bell tower clinging to life above the destruction. This event earned the church its haunting nickname, the Half-Buried Church. Despite the destruction, the Filipino people's strong sense of heritage and faith prevailed. A massive excavation project was undertaken to save the church from permanent entombment. Following the excavation, a long process of restoration began to bring back the church's former glory. San Guillermo Parish Church was eventually declared a national cultural treasure by the Philippine government. Today, the church serves as a functioning parish while also attracting a steady steam of visitors interested in its unique history and architectural features. The stark contrast between the unearthed, restored portion and the remaining lahar-covered section serves as a powerful reminder of the destructive forces of nature and the unwavering spirit of the Filipino people. And lastly, we are at the Parish Church of St. James the Apostle of Betis, or also known as Betis Church, stands as a majestic landmark in Pampanga. Its history is interwoven with faith, artistry, and resilience, making it a treasured cultural and religious site. The story begins in 1607 during the Spanish colonial era. Augustinian priests established a mission chapel dedicated to St. James the Greater the Apostle. The late 19th and early 20th centuries marked a period of artistic enrichment for Betty's Church. This era coincided 
with the service of the last Spanish priest, Father Santiago Blanco. He played an important role in beautifying the church's interior, commissioning the now celebrated artworks that continue to adorn the church today. Among these artistic treasures are the stunning ceiling paintings depicting religious scenes. These are believed to be the work of Macario Ligon, a prominent Filipino painter. In recognition of its exceptional design, historical significance, and the artistic heritage it embodies, Betty's Church was declared a National Cultural Treasure in 2001 by the National Museum. So today was an amazing day exploring historical churches. I'm so glad you joined me on our walking tour from Intramuros to Pinondo in Manila. Right now we are cruising through Clark Global City on our way to the hotel. And yes, finally we have arrived sa hotel kung saan tayo magsistay. Welcome to Joe Carter's Hotel and Suites. Tara, pasok tayo. Located in Chico Street, Clarkview, Malabanas, Angeles City, Pampanga, Joe Carter Hotel offers convenient access to various attractions. Whether you're looking for historical sites, vibrant nightlife, or delicious restaurants, you'll find yourself close to the action. And once again, this is Cebu City Snaps. Thank you for joining me in the exploration of historical churches and art. Please do not forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel and join me on my next adventure.